Hey friends, hey fam, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are all having a wonderful, blessed day. That you guys are blessed and highly favored. Just coming on here to address some questions. I know that everyone has been asking me to do certain types of videos and they're coming. They're coming. It's just right now, this is not my hair by the way. Girl, when I tell you them drawstring ponytails really do <laughs> come in handy when it comes to protective styling because my hair is acting a fool. Bruh, my hair, I don't know what's going on with my hair. You know like when you have those certain moments when it comes to your hair journey and your hair is just not acting right and it's not even that you're manipulating it so much it's just <clears throat> like my hair is so dry and I think why because I tried a new product and I wanted to really get the the most out of it because I wanted to make sure that yes this is not working for my hair am I like the only person who does that because some people they might use like a product once but maybe it was the way that they used it or the technique or whatever products that they used with it didn't help it work as well. Maybe I'll do a review on it on another video, but that Camille Rose Curl Milk, I only got it just because there was such great reviews on it. And I was like, okay, well, ooh, like, let me get on it. Like, let, I wanna try something new. And it, it, like, my hair is just so dry, it's so dry. Since I took out my cubic twist, my hair's just been so dry. Oh, and also, one of you guys did ask me about Hurricane Matthew and how it was doing, because I do live in South Florida. We just got some wind and got some rain, but nothing really too crazy. I do encourage you guys, I know this is a hair video, but outside of that, please do pray for the Caribbean, especially Haiti, Jamaica, Bahamas. I know they're really going through it right now because they got the the bulk of it like there's a lot of Haitians who lost their lives and I live in South Florida so a lot of my friends are Haitians there are a lot of Haitians a huge Haitian community down here in South Florida so definitely do donate your time like research I know people said don't donate to Red Cross but whatever you can do really do try to help them so anyways what's going on with the curly girl method in the max hydration one I did yes I did stop doing the max hydration method a long time ago y'all <laughs> this is like maybe like a year ago and I know many people are like oh see I told you I told you it was so bad for your hair if my hair falling out it's not even that my hair was falling out why I stopped the method and I'm just going to briefly take you through why I stopped doing the max hydration method well actually let's rewind let, let's kind of go back and like let me take you along a little journey with me in the max hydration method I already have a whole video of this so I'm not gonna go into detail but I kept doing the max hydration method I think I modified it maybe like a little bit but for the most part I was still doing it not every day it was like maybe every few days or so and my hair was thriving y'all I'm sorry but that junk held my hair a lot bruh my hair was like a whole different breed I didn't know what was going on I remember like if I would wet my hair you know how some people if they have like really curly hair I think I've said this before let's say if you have like a 3A 3B 3C hair and when your hair is wet it kind of waves a little bit the curls get heavy and they kind of loosen my hair started doing that and I got some kinky hair so it was like bitch I remember <laughs> I was take a shower and like I like I saw my hair in my face guys like I was like what is that I said oh my gosh it's my hair falling in front of my face it was crazy yeah my hair was it was hydrated that stuff was hydrated but the reason for me why I stopped doing the max hydration method was really because after I was doing the max hydration method and then I straightened my hair and you guys know what happened I didn't go back to the method just because I'm very lazy guys like the max hydration method for me it's just too tedious. That was really the big thing. It was tedious and plus I do not like washing goes y'all. Like y'all know I have thin hair. If I, maybe if I had thicker hair I would enjoy it a little bit more. And plus because of my alopecia and like my hair is uneven. But I don't feel like chopping off half of my hair to give it a shape. So when it's wet it doesn't really have the best shape to be honest. It's like almost like a mullet. And I just don't like the shrinkage and how everything looks on my head. So that was a big reason. Plus it was just too tedious y'all. Like I can't sit here and be mixing stuff all the time i'm not a mixtress i know some girls some natural girls like they love doing that they love mixing and all that but for me i'd rather buy something that's already made and as it i don't want to sit here and be mixing the only thing i can mix is clay just because i just put clay and water maybe a little bit of oil but that's it so that's what happened with me in the max hydration method did i go back to the curly girl method well yes because the max hydration method was just yeah y'all that's catholic church down the street yeah 
like every hour and half an hour they always want to ring the bell when it comes to the curly girl method i was already doing that anyways and the max hydration max hydration method was just a stricter version of the curly girl method so i just went back to what i was originally doing kind of just using curly girl friendly products in general what i did take from the max hydration method though the biggest thing that i took from it was clay clay is really a low porosity girl's best friend forget the baking soda <laughs> Clay is really the setting point because that stuff cleans your hair, defines your hair, and since it has such a high pH, because it's not acidic, it's very basic, it opens up your cuticles and actually lets in moisture. The only thing with bentonite clay in particular, you can't use it all the time just because it will clean your hair too much that happened to me during the winter break and i was trying to do the whole wash and go thing again it's too it's just too harsh like it really was just too much for my hair like trying to do bentonite clay twice a week was even too much especially if i'm doing a curly girl method that doesn't have heavy products in the first place what do i need to be washing off every two weeks like to be honest so I switch like to co-washing to alternate between co-washing and bentonite clay. Now, am I still doing the curly girl method to this day? Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Why? Because I wanted to kind of branch out from that a little bit, but cones really scare me, guys. They scare me. I know in the natural hair community, like shampoo is almost like a bad word, but it depends on what type of shampoo that you have. And I realized because um, I use um, cream, of, cream of Nature, their moisturizing shampoo. That stuff is great, y'all. That's like my go-to shampoo. Because I, I thought about it. So I use that shampoo, but it also comes in a line with other things, like, such as um, they have an intensive conditioning treatment. They have a mask and they have other things. And I thought to myself, I'm like, if even though it's sulfate-free shampoo, if it is all made collectively to suit one another, like, you know, for the best results, even though these have cones, this should remove the cones because why would they give you a product that can't remove the other products, if that makes sense? And I looked into um, surficants. That's one of the big things when it comes to sulfate-free shampoos and also can sulfate-free shampoos remove cones and what type of cones? So for the most part, I stay away from the very, very heavy cones, like dimethicone, dimethicono, canolo, whatever. I stay away from those ones, but I, amino dimethicone, it's like an in-between cone. You have different types of cones. So I kind of tested it and my hair was still clean though. So I was kind of surprised because I used um, their intensive conditioner and I used something else, but I shampooed following week with their shampoo. My hair was fine. <laughs> so I wanted to kind of branch out a little bit but for the most part I in my leave-in conditioners and the things I use every single day I avoid cones like a plague because they will build up on top of my hair but as far as if a cone was like one of the last ingredients within um, the ingredients or something like I do look and I do read I'm more lenient just because I do shampoo but I try to avoid them in my everyday hair care routine just because I still have low porosity hair. My hair is still going to not receive all the moisture that it needs. So that's just where I am right now. I'm experimenting a little bit more, but still staying within that confines of curly girl friendly things because they are the best for my hair since I do have low porosity hair. When it comes to moisturizing, low porosity hair, cleanliness. If your hair is not clean, nothing's going to get into that. <laughs> so that build up is real like that's why I couldn't be afraid of shampoos anymore and I had to really use clay so I alternate like either use clay co-wash or shampoo it depends on how dirty my hair is or what time of the month it is so that is the reasons why I stopped the max hydration method and where I am now I know some people are still asking me for um, tutorials and for more information when it comes to my hair regimen but I don't really have a set hair regimen I just have products that work for my hair and I do things that work for my hair and I might do a video on that and I'll try to do a video with tutorials on how to make I think a big thing too is how to make thin fine hair a pair thicker so I definitely will get on that and I thank you guys again so much for the support you guys are the best y'all y'all are the best thin hair gang thin hair squad <laughs> we still rocking out here I will see you guys again somewhere bye